episode 17 of The Witching Hour. You know me. I'm Perry, and you know Haley. Hey. There we go. But now we have a special guest that I am thrilled to introduce. We are sitting here with Kristen Rulin, who wrote Welcome to Mercy yeah. and is also the star of it. So <laughs> a huge thank you for being with us today. We're yeah. excited to talk about this one. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Before <laughs> we even get to that, we have an extra exciting thing for you. Haley, do you want to introduce yes, that? Yes, we've got another giveaway for you guys. So you, uh, if you listen to the podcast, have probably heard me talk a bit about Anna in the Apocalypse. It is the Christmas zombie musical that premiered. Yeah, mm. pretty good, right? Premiered last year at Fantastic Fest, has been making the festival rounds, finally coming to theaters. And so this is for New York listeners. Sorry, everyone else. But if you are in New York and if you are free on Wednesday, November 28th, We've got tickets to an advanced screening at 7.30 in Union Square Stadium 14. So, if you want to enter for those, need you to just tweet whatever the heck you want. Hashtag Collider Witching Hour. Specifically, whatever the heck you want. <laughs> yeah, those exact words. <laughs> tweet anything. Tell, tell me how good my hair looks today. I don't care. <laughs> uh, tweet it with the hashtag Collider Witching Hour and the hashtag... A-A-T-A movie, which is Anna and the Apocalypse movie, and we will get you hooked up with an early screening for this super, super fun zombie musical. I want to go to that. It's a I'm, good one. Yeah. I'm really so sad fun. that I'm not seeing that just yet, but I You'll will. get there. I will. You'll get there. I'm pumped. Just in time um, for Christmas. Yeah. It, se it seems like an appropriate one, especially because I feel like between now and the holidays, we don't have enough genre content or new no. genre content coming out, which is another reason why it's a good thing that this movie was made yes. available on all VOD <laughs> platforms via IFC Midnight on November 2nd. So after we talk about Welcome to Mercy, you are more than welcome to just go watch it. Um, before we even get into the movie specifically, we want to meet you a little. How did you get into film and specifically what drew you to genre filmmaking? Um, well, I always loved horror films ever since I was a kid. Like, I loved Poltergeist and, um, I mean, The Exorcist, The Omen, like, all those, like, 70 kind of, like, old scary movies were just always it for me. Um, and then as an actress starting out in my 20s, I was auditioning and working, um, not ever in certain things that I was like, uh, that was on the barometer of like stuff that I wanted to see and do, to put it lightly. So <laughs> um, I was inspired by a movie that I had seen called Antichrist by Lars von Trier. Um, and it was the first time I saw a movie that uh, the trailer looked super scary, but when I saw the movie, it wasn't particularly like, like a horror film, but it was so visually haunting and beautiful um it was kind of like what i wanted pan's labyrinth to be a little bit more but it was just like the visual stuff and that's what got me hooked to tell or create a movie like welcome to mercy that i thought was like a visual horror story and mm -hmm. and catapulted with exorcisms because growing up catholic we had to watch real exorcisms <laughs> in theology. Whoa. That was always terrifying. Like you meet people that really believe they were possessed or they were going through exorcisms. Very haunting and scary. I did not realize that was a thing. Oh, I did not. It's either. real. It's real. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> um, I thought Baptist Christian was intense. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I, I have many questions about that. Mm -hmm. so is it is it part of of some sort of uh, like a, a schooling that you have to sit and watch that? Um, I mean, it's just part of the curriculum. So, okay. like, you know, you go to Catholic school, there's theology classes, and then every grade is a different, like, focus, usually world theology. So, like, you're learning Hinduism, you're learning Judaism, with always a Catholic understructure. So, I think it was, like, ninth grade is the year that everyone, like, looked forward to because <laughs> ninth grade is when they finally <laughs> brought in the, the exorcist oh. movies that they would teach that, um, you know, it's real. And this is what the Vatican says about it right now. This is what the priests have to do. These are the priests that are studying exorcisms and the actual <laughs> verbiage that they use and everything. And I also took Latin. And so I was like, oh, my God, it's even more real. Like, it's in Latin. It's so much. It's like, <laughs> you know, and it would just haunt me. And um, 
So when I got to explore that for real when I was writing this movie, just just the history of it, like going all the way back to the first exorcisms in Catholicism in France when it all started, like you wonder what, what the connection was and Anyway, I just like really dove in. Ooh, I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, that's really interesting. So having had that experience, do you look at other exorcism movies and think, you know, like, like certain things are being just for entertainment and horror sure. movie value? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I definitely saw The Exorcist when I was, I think, in around ninth grade that same time um, when I'd first been kind of introduced to it. And... That was definitely scary. Um, there were books that I had read, too, that I found really scary. And um, I think it's, you know, the exorcist stuff in horror movies that you see are all, like, the the spinning of the head, the spitting up of pea soup or whatever, like The Exorcist, or... Um, I don't know, like the, they're always just like tr transformed into an evil demon monster, right? And there's always just like this monster that's like controlling you. What I was more interested in, in my story and like learning about it was like, well, where do these people go? You know, if the exorcism of Emily Rose, like that was based on a true story. This girl supposedly didn't have any Latin backstory. Like I was like, oh, if I got possessed, like they would say that I studied Latin for seven years. So like I definitely would have like <laughs> been lying about it or something, right? But this girl who supposedly like didn't have any backstory, like where are those stories? How do they come about to have that knowledge? So that interested me and um, made me think like I'm not as interested about seeing the girl tied down to the bed or seeing her transform into a demon as much as I'm interested in where she goes when she's on that bed like these people are affected for like a month or years like mentally they check out they can speak in tongues they can speak Aramaic they can speak Latin or German and they know little details about the people that they're interacting in a room with that they've never met before like how do they have that and I wanted to explore like where your kind of soul goes, where that part of your body goes. And that's kind of what Madeline does. That is fascinating. Yeah, I'm curious as, you know, you say you grew up a fan of the genre and you also grew up in this religious culture. Uh, part of, I believe, part of why The Exorcist and The Exorcism of Emily Rose work so well is that the directors were both believers. Mm -hmm. Did you find that that experience made you more afraid of those types of films or less so? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I completely believed in it. And I think, um, you know, our director has some of his own beliefs and things. And I think that that does make it more terrifying. I, when I wrote the script, um, there was like a, it was a week long time that took me to wrote, write it. And it, I was by myself. And like the strangest things had happened to me in that week. And then thereafter for six months, I had really strange <laughs> Awful, awful things happened to me that I couldn't explain. And when I was researching, like, what possession was in terms of the Catholic's definition and the Vatican's definition, um, like, I definitely think something happened to me. I think I played with fire. I think I did a lot of research with demons and demon demonology. Like, I even told my grandmother about it. Like, I, I mean, it was next level. But I, I, I actually prayed I was like, I'm so sorry. I, I should have never gotten mixed up with this, you know. And I'm like, and if if you make it go away, like I will tell everybody. And it and it did. Like, and within 24 hours, something that like oh. I had been afflicted with for like six months, that kind of fear. And I took a beat from the script and pushing it from the studios that were interested for like two years. Got wow. married, had kids, had a normal life. I was really scared to get back involved in it. Carrie Granite, the executive producer really held my hand. I went through some other weirdly awful things and finally came to get the movie made and, and went forward with it. But like, yeah, it's very true. Like, I think there's a lot of realism with it. And I think you have to be very careful with it, the topic and the genre. And I think you have to give it like a, an amount of respect and um, like I think I'm very happy with the way Welcome to Mercy came out. I didn't want. I'm like I'm not like shitting on God or anything. <laughs> this is like sending a good message at the end of the day. You know, it's. But yeah, I think you have to believe to tell the the story accurately because then you you kind of like go on the journey with the character. Oh my! I have so mm -hmm. many follow up questions. <laughs> um, wait, I guess first, 
So that experience you had writing the script, does mm-hmm. any of that then carry over <coughs> to actual production? Because I think both of us have been on a couple of, uh, of horror sets that deal with this kind of stuff, and everyone always claims, oh, so- something's happened, mm-hmm. or, you know, the set is blessed before you shoot, or something along mm-hmm. those lines. Did you guys do anything or experience anything like that? Um, we didn't have any... Well, no, I guess, like... The, my One of my friends, Bryce McGuire, actually did have some holy water that he had blessed and sent um, for us. And I actually, I got to meet, where did I meet that priest? I did meet a priest who came and gave me, like, these medallions, which I think I still actually have Ooh. in my bag. Yeah, and he, like, told me to take them with me. Like, so this is my grandmother's wallet. That's why it's, like, 50 million. Yeah, and he gave me these little things, and he's like, these will protect you from everything. And, oh God, he was like, put them on this, on, on like, a window sill wherever you go when you're filming. And I, I, very weird, very strange, weird things. Anyway, um... <laughs> We didn't have any instances on set that were, like, bizarre, although when I was shopping the script around, I had a meeting with Sam Ramey's company, and they were talking about the crazy stuff that would happen on set, like lights, like, bursting spontaneous fires, um, like, objects moving but, like, then reappearing. I mean, just crazy stuff. I didn't have any of that on my set. It was literally just, like the I mean that period of time where I was really in it and and in the I feel like the birth of like the story that's that was what was really dangerous because I was so obsessed with creating some of these characters that didn't make it into the movie actually um they were in an earlier draft but this one custodian's name his name was Gressel (laughs) very serious demon I shouldn't have said his name out loud I feel like that's bad um and like all of the little things that kind of like would bring him to life, like when he would come into the room. Anyway, it's very creepy. And just saying the names, having them in your head, researching them, I think brings back bad stuff. We talk about the Conjuring franchise all the time, and I can't even begin to tell you how many times I said Valak and Bathsheba <laughs> out loud. And, yeah. and, and you're like, and it's like, Jesus, please save me. Like, at this point, it's like, I've said it so many times. What am I going to do about it? Oh, no, it? but that's where you have to be careful. That's where, you, like, I, my grandmother is a very staunch Catholic, was raised by nuns. She didn't have her parents, she lost her parents when she was very young. So I think all of that, like, Catholicism and, like, always rained upon me. And as a child, she'd always be like, if you're ever scared, you just have to say, like Jesus' name over and over again and you'll be fine. So I'd be like, Jesus, Jesus. And I, when I was writing it and I was terrified, I started waking up in the middle of the night. My dog would like wake up with me and I just would feel something in the room. And my boyfriend was asleep next to me at the time and he was Jewish. And I was like, okay, like in my head talking to myself, I'm like, there's nothing in the room. Boyfriend's here, dog's here, it's good. Like just get up and go to the bathroom just get up and go it's fine you know but I didn't want to I couldn't get I was like terrified and I'm like there's no evil spirit here like if there was you know Jesus God is stronger than the devil okay and I'm like and so I was just just having this dialogue in my head and then I was like Jesus 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 and I'm like and then I'm like you know if you were actually stronger than Jesus or God like you would do something to show and prove it like right now and said that in my head and then my boyfriend like sat up he was still asleep like turned to me and he's like they said he was a miracle baby and then he went back to bed and I was like (laughs) and that was the start that was the start of some really weird bad bad (laughs) stuff and I was like "Mm, that's gonna do it for me (laughs) that was awful that was awful and that was the start of like just Health ailments, just very bad things. Oh my god! <laughs> so oh. you can't, you can't take it lightly. You went through it to make yeah. this movie, and so who knows if you see this movie? It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. just all, but, well, but we're it's still with you now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Oh wow, that's crazy. That after all that too, though, you you stuck with it, and yeah, you, you know you it. you bring up Sam Raimi, and that is quite yeah. the the name to get to meet with about this. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the process of taking a script like this and shopping it around? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I first wrote it, it had uh, like the the strong concept of it was like the POV of an exorcism, like going inside someone's mind that's being exorcised, um, which that's like. 
big twist. So <laughs> just told you there. But um, <laughs> but that was what kind of interest uh, um, a lot of the studios from like Warner Brothers and Ghost House, which is Sam Raimi's. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I had sent it to a couple friends that were in the industry. Um, one of them was an executive producer for Walking Dead at the time, and he really liked it. And then just he sent it to a couple people, and that just opened up a ton of doors without me really having to do much of anything. Very young and experienced, like, actress, not a writer, didn't know, like – ghost house at the time was like well like well, what do you think about like we don't like how she o- opens up out of nowhere like we do like it but we need the audience to engage this way like what if we change the story to this way i'm like hmm? no 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 like <laughs> that's not the story like that's this is the story you stuck with your guns <laughs> no but i mean you know naively so i didn't understand like writers work with companies and they like revise right. and do all this stuff i was very much like this is my script you're not doing anything it's a very difficult thing to to go through i mean whether you're talking about getting notes like that or or even getting notes in a test screening or something like that mm-hmm. because you know sometimes you got a way being able to stay true to your story and what you created versus right. being able to take notes and the line between the two can be very blurry. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, it worked out. I mean, I, I ended up doing a lot of development with Cary Granite, but he, um, who he was formerly with Walden Media, who did, like, Scream and um, The Chronicles of Narnia, and he was uh, he was someone, he was a, one of the producers that just got it. Like, he got me, he got the mythology, he got the intentions of Madeline and how I wanted to tell it. Like, I didn't want just like another gore and horror I just like I wanted it to be haunting and beautiful and serious <laughs> and so and he supported that so I was so lucky to have him in that mix too this movie is so beautifully shot it's I think really, I think that's yeah. what we've been talking about much of the afternoon there's some like drop dead gorgeous visuals in this thing <laughs> thank and you the really lighting effective. is so I, on point it makes sense that you would say antichrist struck you for the imagery because mm-hmm. i really do feel that a uh, standout of this film is the imagery yeah and i i mean i totally agree igor kropotov like our um cinematographer he i saw just his f- still photos at first before i saw his reel and i like he got it it's definitely like what is it underexposed and a lot of things, but it works. And he doesn't have always like the glamour shots. Like definitely, I'm like, mm, who is that? Like gorilla? That's me. Um, you know, as I sit now with my boyfriend and watch some of the scenes, I'm like, mm, that is not an attractive angle. <laughs> um, but, but um, you know, it just it works for the story, and it's. And it's it's awesome. Like, and that's what I love about that's what I set out to do. Like, that's what I love about those kind of, you know, antichrist kind of movies. From the writing perspective, as somebody who has like, you know, a good amount of experience from an acting standpoint, did you have a lot of screenwriting experience before? And if not, how did you approach just sort of banging out that script? Uh, no, I didn't really have a t- well, I guess I grew up writing stories and writing like creative writing always so I was always in like AP English and stuff and doing writing scholarships and and sponsorships to kind of get extra money for stuff or like to get some type of scholastic thing um so I did always have I guess that aspect of storytelling under my belt and then I as I became an actress I was always reading scripts auditioning so I definitely got a you know a taste of like the style and how to do it and then I finally created like a web series for myself um and I thought that was going to be something that was fun and different but it just you know it kind of set the tone for me like oh I can write something and create it and bring it to life and um this was fun and that was my first taste of it but really what it was was um one of my good friend Jay Smith Cameron her husband Mm -hmm. Um, who's Kenneth Lonergan, wrote Manchester by the Sea, was like, I, I was like a young actress, and I'm like, what do I do to get my role? Like, what do I do to get the one that I want? Like, I try to audition for these things, but they're not coming. And he's like, you should sit down and write the character, the role in the world that you want to do it. And Absolutely. I did that literally like a month later or back on the plane ride home, and that was it. <laughs> that was like the next, like, you know, I was like, what are the characters that I want to play? And I literally like wrote them down on a... And the attributes of those characters, and 
I kind of started coming together with Madeline and her personality. It was like her personality and her character and like what emerged from that is like what Welcome to Mercy ended up being. While you're writing a role for yourself, is there, especially a role as demanding as what we see here, are you busy writing something and saying, oh, I'm dreading that scene now? You know, I didn't even No, A lot of it, okay, so a lot of it was adjusted for Latvia when we got there because I had always written it as, like, nondescript, kind of not in the winter. That was adjusted <laughs> for Latvia because and the time of year that we were shooting there. So that was something I totally didn't even like comprehend until I was there. <laughs> and, and it's like, freezing. And it's freezing, like <laughs> negative 23 hypothermia three times, freezing. Did not even think about this stuff. <laughs> and to uh, like accommodate a lot of the stuff that when we were there, I, I just, well, I wasn't even thinking of it being me doing those things. And I wasn't thinking of the environment. And it was more like, wow, that's so cool. So how are we gonna do that? Is that gonna be like a green screen situation? Or, and they're like, no, you're gonna get in the Baltic Sea. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Or it's like you're gonna hang out that, hang out off that bell tower. You're gonna do it, girl, on a cable wire. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Like it was just so. <laughs> but it happened so fast. I didn't even have time to like digest. I'm like, where's the stunt double? Oh, there isn't one. <laughs> That's fun. Like it was like, but it was wow. so fast that it it worked because I didn't have a split second to even consider what I'd put myself in. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, next time I'll write something about Fiji. Yes. <laughs> Sun. Do you have that itch to write again? Because this seems like a, you know, a very personal story and something you were very passionate about telling. And, you know, one of the, the first things they tell you in film school is like, when you make a, a movie, your first mm -hmm. movie, at least have the idea or the, the seeds of the next one in your back pocket because when something takes off, you need to be ready. So did you approach that this movie with that in mind? No, I'm, no, I didn't approach it with like, oh, here's this one I'm going to write and jump into this next one. But I guess as I had the time to kind of, oh, after I wrote that script, I did have a little bit of traction or interest. So I did end up pivoting and I wrote like a comic um, for a company for spec and then that got developed and then I got it pushed into a pilot so I did write that very quickly after then I wrote another horror film recently called Pareidolia which just was at the final rounds at Austin Film Festival and that's another exorcism movie mm. um, but it's more like a sci-fi exorcism which has a new concept as well <laughs> I won't give it away um, but it's it's a nice flip. It got a lot of good feedback because, again, it's something we haven't seen in the exorcism genre that I think is cool. And coming from a chemistry background, I also am very into that situation mm -hmm. in that world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's very new and exciting. And then um, I have other, like, things that I've written that are just, like, more family genre stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I have a lot of... I have a lot of scripts in the pen. And then I'm also in the middle, on my last leg of finishing a film, another script for Carrie Granite, which is a coming of age, like 16 year old girls, like world journey kind of thing, like national adventure, like national treasure kind of thing. Oh, cool. so, but it's like more religious kind of like undertones as well. So, yeah. Got a lot of writing stuff. Going. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, wait, what else is that? I was I also know. just filming, like, the com production company I work for. We're like doing an American female American Psycho movie up in like Malibu last week. Got shut down and evacuated. Not a good House week to be in Malibu. Awful, awful. So like, literally, it's just been. Whoa. It's it's one project to the other, but it's good. It's all like amazing, fun stuff. That's, I mean, yeah. that's the way you got to operate. Yeah. You got to have a million things going yeah, on at once. And that's, like that, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm, I couldn't be happier about this one. Speaking of, you already brought up just more like family ideas. And I mean, clearly you're continuing with the possession idea too. Mm. 
This year in genre releases in particular, I feel like we're seeing more fam- more genre movies with like a really strong family backbone than ever. And mm-hmm. it's really appealing to me and it's giving these movies, because you know, we talk about every single horror movie in here. We love a, a wide range of them, but there is still that stigma out there where it's like, oh, another horror movie. It's going to be <laughs> gore for the sake of gore. I've seen it all before. When's the jump scare? All of that. But I feel like we're getting a lot of a lot more rich storytelling that's showing us other perspectives that we haven't really seen before. So we've got a long list of 2018 horror movies that have kind of piqued our interest, especially recently. Is there anything this year that really caught your eye? Um... Okay. Oh, yes. I had... We had some good ones that we liked. We really liked, um... Uh, a quiet, a quiet, quiet place. place. A quiet place, and we really liked the one. Gosh, what uh, with Lo- Logan Marshall Green? I'm blanking oh, yeah. on the Upgrade. name. Upgrade. Upgrade yeah. was awesome. I'm so fantastic. happy you brought that up. Really, really surprising. Like scary, but laugh out loud in moments. Yeah. Like total satisfaction for me. Um, and then I did recently see Hereditary. That was really bizarre. I liked that. <laughs> um, the head scene like freaked Ooh, me out. Yeah. Like, I mean, a- which one though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, those were some that really that topped it for me. But Upgrade really surprised me because it was like we didn't. I didn't see any advertising for it, and it was literally just like something we kind of stumbled into and I was I was so excited with it. This is definitely the case with Upgrade. It was nice to have mm-hmm. something that kind of, you know, caught fire in a way too, where, where people started to talk about it and then all of a sudden the word spread because if I remember correctly, I feel like it did fairly well at the box office for a movie of that mm-hmm. scale and the fact that people still talk about it too. I love that that movie's getting the attention it deserves. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought that was great and I thought it was great for the act. Like, I just, I liked the way it was shot. Um... I'm I'm very into like the the weird like visual stuff that feels like you know like I mean it's not like I it follows you know is like one of also my favorite things like I love those stylistic weird choices like something weird oh and what was one the bro the broad the broad oh, broad they were like weird two two weird vampires or werewolves or something. Do you know that one? Oh <gasps> I don't know that I do. Yeah, I don't think I know that either. They're yeah. like vampires. That was a good one. It's it's a foreign film. Two two vampires. Oh, I'm so curious now. Yeah. I was also not really sure like as you were using certain descriptors. Do you know what movie my mind kept going to? What like weird and visual and what? No, it starts with an S. Suspiria? Suspiria, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I was excited for that yeah. one, too. <laughs> Anytime I'm around Haley and somebody gives any descriptor whatsoever that could even in the slightest pertain to Suspiria, I'm like, Haley, you thinking about Suspiria? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am hardcore obsessed with Suspiria. <laughs> no, I was, I've been excited for that one for so long. I was, like, dying to see who they were going to cast in it. Yes. I mean, like, that 70s kind of throwback. Did you love it? Oh, I, I love I'm obsessed my favorite movie of the year I'm obsessed with it I love it I, I think the reason I didn't put it together I don't think it's that weird as everyone else does I, I think it's not that weird but that's that's me it's yeah. extreme it's not yes, it's it not is. That did you extreme. see what happened in that movie yeah like whatever it's a really nice story with some intense <laughs> moments I love it oh. yes that's a great one it's it's been a really good year for horror, and it is, you know, your your film does sort of come in this trend of films this year that really are about anxiety, anxieties pertaining to, <laughs> to parenting and, yeah. and raising a family. It's like, I put together this list, there was Hereditary, A Quiet Place, Cargo, Halloween, Suspiria has oh. themes of motherhood, mm-hmm. and of course The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Oh yeah, that was great too. It's, I don't know why this year everyone's like, fuck, we gotta raise our kids. I know, <laughs> you know? I know. We do it right. But that was what was weird about what The Haunting um, on Hill, Hill House or uh-huh. whatever, like, because my boyfriend at the end of it, he was like, well, ugh. That mom was just a huge bitch. She just got everyone <laughs> killed in the end. And I'm like, and I'm sobbing because I'm like, no, this is my forever house. She just wanted them to be together. But, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know I'm, but it is true. It's like, she was trying you, to keep them safe. She, yeah. I'm like, she should, they should have gotten out there sooner. I'm like, it's not her fault. It's the demon. 
I watch all of these movies and these shows, and then I'm like, oh, thank God I have a cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't think I can sleep at night. Yeah, I don't need to have that pressure. <laughs> that, and I'm like, well, I'm so happy me and my mom are on really good terms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Mm. Mm. So now we want to be able to talk about our favorite possession movies. Yes. Jumping off of the wonderful movie you created. So yes. we've got a long list here. Do you want to take the honors first? It doesn't have to be like the best in the world, the your favorite uh, at the top of your list. But when you think of a really good possession movie, what's the first one that comes to your mind? I mean, for me, I mean, I don't want to sound so cliche, but... Okay, so The Exorcism of Emily Rose, I felt took it to another notch. Like, I was like, this is a classy exorcism <laughs> movie. <laughs> and I was like, they have Laura Linney in here. Um, so I thought that was just really well done. Again, using the fog and her coming out of that barn scene to me. And for whatever reason it is, like, the mouth dropping open and the eye, like, mm. anyone's mouth going open scares the hell out of me. <laughs> it just terrifies me. And then... The Exorcist also just I think it's just because I like the 70s but it's it's classic to me like it's very subtle and Rosemary's Baby we were see it does okay. count it, yeah, it kind of counts she gets, she gets like sort of possessed I mean she's it's like a cult but like when she's getting raped like he makes a deal with the devil so he's yeah. like possessed he makes the deal with the devil okay. to sell their baby. I, it's very hard for me to consider it a possession film, but I, I'll open my mind. I feel like I'm looking at you right now as the authority on this. And also because <laughs> I want it, I want you, it to you, count right you now. You certainly know more about the religious <laughs> angle than I ever would and like deals with the devil and stuff like that. I mean, I think if any situation where like the devil has a hold over you or your soul or someone else's soul, I think that's like a possession. And the fact that the devil in that instance made a deal with the dad and, and he was the baby devil, that's a baby <laughs> devil that she was carrying. I mean, he was literally born a little monster. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a step above possession. Oh, so he's the like baby's possessed. The baby, well, the, and the dad made the deal with the devil like he was going out to do bad things he created that guy to lose his legs so he yeah. could star in the commercial yeah. in the play which started his career because he's like you know come over here like i'll make your dreams come true you you want to be an actor <laughs> i'll make you an actor it's like give, give me that baby that movie chills me to the bone I, mm -hmm. and it's not even just when i'm watching it it's also when someone's describing it too mm -hmm. and i'm just brought back to that and just the isolation of that position she's in and just also like, knowing how helpless she is the entire time, it breaks my heart every single time I watch it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think I love all the details about it, like at the Dakota, the building. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a teenager, one of the first, or when I watched it when I was a teenager, then when I went to New York in college, one of the first places I went was the Dakota, because I was like, i got to see this, got to see this building where Rosemary, dro you know, lost that baby. <laughs> and then, like, you know, the chick jumped out of the building. Like... I was like, I wonder if there's actually demon cult people inside of here. Like, and then, you know, I'm like watching people leave the building and I'm like, are you a cult member? Are you a Satan worshiper? You know, and it's like, I don't know, just the tannis root around the neck. Yeah. Like, just every single it. time I see someone wear a necklace just with that shape. Yeah. It doesn't like, matter. I just assume mm -hmm. there's something in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh. Wiccans, Satan worshipers. Now I'm thinking of Wicca from <laughs> yeah. Sabrina. Well, Wiccans are not Satan worshippers, just to be clear. That's true. That's true. <laughs> totally, totally different, different secular areas. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my boss just told me the other day, she was like, I was a Wiccan back in the day. I'm like, oh, first, no. First, she identified herself as goth. I'm like, you weren't goth. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I was. I practiced Wicca. And I'm like, just because you practice Wicca doesn't mean you were goth. Was this the 90s? I'm like, totally we different. Were all goth Wiccans yeah, in the 90s. Yeah, right? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, just because you did like a fashion trend doesn't mean that you participated in anything. Stop trying to be cool. <laughs> Do you want to throw one out, Haley? Yeah. Because you told me one today that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Not to force you into picking this one no, first. No, you know I always want to talk about it. <laughs> I do. Uh, Jennifer's Body is just one of my favorite oh, movies. Yeah. And, uh, that was a good one. I love it. I don't think it gets its credit nearly enough. It's starting to. Like, it, it's getting some re-appreciation years later. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
I, I love the whole idea of using possession as a, a means to tell a story about a toxic friendship and about mm. a friend who turns away from you. Oh, yeah. I feel, I feel like that's a movie that gets better. Actually, now that I'm saying this, I think I say this about all of Karin Kusama's movies, that they get better over time, where I just suspect that many of the reviews and the reactions, especially even discussions that I had coming out of my first watch of Jennifer's Body, was like very entertainment surface-level type things. And then when I went and revisited, you see all these little intricate details that, that do hint at a much deeper story than you might expect. I'm going to do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> While you do that, I'm going to throw out one of my favorite. I have an obsession with paranormal activity. <gasps> yeah, of course. That was like a whole breakthrough of storytelling. Specifically the first three. The first three are so, so good. And oh, then yeah. I think they might have lost their way a little bit. But it was the first movie in many, many years. Because not nothing keeps me awake at night. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. whenever anybody tells me they have had some sort of experience, mm -hmm. I feel like I shouldn't be jealous. But part of me is because... You're like, I, I got nothing. I feel, yeah, I feel like a little numb to a lot of it. I can enjoy any horror movie out there, mm -hmm. but nothing... I, like, I Scares missed that you. feeling when I was... I, when I was little, I used to fall asleep with the TV on. Same. And I used to always have MTV on. And late <laughs> at night is when they would start to play the commercials for the R-rated horror movies. And I vividly remember being, like, something like maybe 9 or 10 years old and feeling that need to, like, pull the covers yeah. over my head when, let's say, one of, like, I, I don't know, for some reason the the, the Texas Chainsaw commercial is coming oh, to yeah, mind right yeah, now. Yeah. I can't remember what came first, the remake or beginnings, but whatever ah! that one was, <laughs> that was the one that made me cover my eyes. And then uh, all of a sudden... My boyfriend directed that. The the one the remake one with wait, wait, with, with Matt Bomber. Mm. Wait, I'm sorry. What's your boyfriend's name? Jonathan Liebesman. What? Yeah. Uh, I did not put two and two together. Battle of LA, a very alien like one. Kinda scary. That, there's a movie that doesn't get the credit. <laughs> I think both of those two Texas Chainsaw movies don't get the credit they deserve. But uh, he also did um, he, Darkness Falls back in the day about the Tooth Fairy. I haven't thought about that movie mm -hmm. in forever. Yeah. We just had an Untapped incredible hero. realization that I need to catch <laughs> Haley up on. What is it? Her boyfriend is Jonathan Liebsman. Like, Texas Chainsaw oh, wow. and... Um, Darkness Falls. Darkness Falls. There's something that I, um, I feel Battle like... LA. Wrath of the Titans, te Teenage Mutant Wrath Ninja Turtles. Wrath of the Titans is where I first met him. And, oh, and we, yeah. had an, we had an interview for that. And I was on the set of the first uh, Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, my gosh. I was hardcore yeah. rooting for, for that whole series to take off. And the yes. designs of the turtles still, I think, are he pretty awesome. He has them awesome. in his office. They're very, all of his like aliens and monsters. Little, it's very cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank I love you. That. He's there's, great. There's our, our Best first tangent of the there. Somehow we got from paranormal activity to all of that. I'm I think thrilled it's, with it. Because I brought up um, watching one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, TV spots when I was young, and uh -huh. just like like being uh, not being scared anymore, and missing that feeling of like wanting to pull like cover your eyes or pull the covers over yeah, your head yeah. or something. But paranormal activity was the first movie in a very long time that changed that for me. Where I vividly remember being in my apartment apartment late at night mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll sleep with the door open so obviously Dewey can come in and out yeah, yeah. but just looking out the door into the darkness and waiting for the bathroom light to turn on oh my god yeah that almost would be hoping it would no, <laughs> no you don't want to I know light. I know this no. is a, a rarity I've been getting over a cold and sometimes when I have to run out I come in and I'm like what are they talking about now? <laughs> so happened? now I actually know. Yeah. I'm caught up. You're I, caught up. I had to catch you up on all of that information. Yes. A lot of information just came That's through funny. in that yeah. conversation. <laughs> That's uh, so funny. Yeah, paranormal is one that I... It I, changed everything. I respect. It doesn't scare me. I don't know why. I, just, I agree. Like, I think the surveillance stuff doesn't scare me. Yeah, maybe that's part of my problem. The what, but she's what she's talking about that power that wishing the light would come on even though you know you don't want it to. I know. You know, I know. You don't, Do Perry. <laughs> my Alexis turned on in the middle of the night. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it was just a power surge also. I mean, I think you have to like you have to believe and you have to get in there deep. You have to commit to quit. Like you've got <laughs> to you know to the Wiccan kind of stuff. Like, you have to believe in what you're... I mean, and you will scare yourself. Okay. I feel like this is a challenge to it's do, like, challenge. witching hour on the road or in a curious yeah. location. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, but you... Ooh. you The people that I believe... I tell if I just really turned you off or not. No, no, I, I was like, ooh, witching hour on the Queen Mary or something like mm -hmm. that. That could you be fun. You have to put yourself in those... 
in those areas, like the Magic Castle or something, or like yeah, yeah. Zach Bagans, his little you know ghost hunter things. Like you gotta I, be careful. Yeah, I was just uh, when we were uh, covering Go Ninety stuff. Uh, I think her name was Liana Vamp. She's really big on social media, but mm. she was going around and doing all of these these like witchy things where she was learning about it, and she went in a non-believer, and it's it kind of like chronicles the journey of you know it's sinking in, and not necessarily doing interviews with all the right people either, which made it an especially interesting watch. Is you know talking to people who say they know what they're talking about, but then having an experience with someone who really knows their stuff and the idea of you know figuring out what to prioritize and really believe in mm -hmm. is just fascinating so this conversation is so much more actually like real life stuff than <laughs> i was expecting <laughs> no i should, love it you should talk with people that are like being exercised or have you know really experienced the stuff like carrie set up some interviews with me with people in latvia that were possessed and that were going through the catholic process and I like I videotaped them and like never got to meet with someone in you know in person before but the stuff that they say it's it's freaking weird and like I mean I had my own touches with it but I think if you if you want to find it it's gonna I'm interested. it's gonna come I'm it's gonna interested. come I'd be careful given, let me know you have to drop me a line <laughs> like, it's happened <laughs> I'm getting emails like it's oh. happening <laughs> Have you ever, in those interviews, had had any kind of uh, like experience or got any information that made you say, "In my filmmaking, I'm going to draw the line here. It, like it's it's too much or it's too real." Um. Well, I mean, I did adjust my script. To. I adjusted my script a bit to um, not have evil prevail so much. Mm. But, um, it, and to send more of like a, a message of, I guess, like hope from the theological standpoint and making it a little bit more positive uh, Catholic-wise and not negative. So I didn't want that bad juju coming back on me. Right. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Also, I think we're, we're in a time period where it's, it's not a bad idea to send out more films with at least a little bit of positivity or, or inspiration we'll at the hope end. to cling to. Yes, please. Yeah. I, yeah. I need lots of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were some really dark things, I think, in my original uh, that portrayed, like, nuns and priests in certain ways, and I just, towards the, I, that was, the, yeah, those were, tw I think they would be cool to see, and I think the, those things that shock people for shock value, or, like, just, mind twist you are always cool but at the same time I'm like do I want to be the person to say that <laughs> probably not were you ever tempted to put a jump scare in your script yeah for sure there were tons actually um uh there's a lot of stuff that I felt that were just scary that didn't make it into the final script because we just you know the effects or whatever a lot of the things changed but I mean there was like I said there was this custodian name um, he didn't have a tongue, and there's a whole story about why he didn't have a tongue. And then there was goats that you know did things, and people did things like there was there were weird things in there that like and that didn't make it in the final story, which were more horror, jump scary things. There was you know your classic big moments that didn't make it. Jump scares are not easy things to handle mm -hmm. well. No. Or maybe they are easy things and people just don't take the right route. I mean, it, no, I, I guess, don't think they're easy. They're easy to do, but they're hard to do well. Hard to execute. I guess so. I mean, it just, it, it seems to me like with a, with a jump scare, it's as simple as it not just being there for the sake of having a scare. It's mm -hmm. just finding a way to work it into your story and give it purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just literally taking that that baby step forward and thinking story first before scare. I don't know. I'm not a writer, so maybe I shouldn't say that's that's easy <laughs> no, by any means. It's, but it's so it much. seems like they're they're in two very clear categories to me, and you should always veer towards one rather than the other. I'll give a, a, an example of a really good I thought something that made me jump in a movie this year and it came out in January so spoilers for the last insidious <laughs> movie if you ah. haven't seen it plug your ears but, um, if you guys haven't seen it and don't want me to say it I will not <laughs> no no I <laughs> no, want to know which one now okay so there's a part where uh, Elise 
Lynn Shay, lovely Lynn Shay, believes that she's seeing a ghost, and then it, that person reaches out and grabs her, and she realizes mm-hmm. it's a kidnapped woman. Mm-hmm. And that, I was like, I jumped and went, oh my God, that just changed the whole story, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't gratuitous, it was a necessary next step. Story. Yeah. It's a good call. Yeah. The other That's one we one. were talking about that is now my favorite jump scare of the entire yeah. year is we talked a lot about the haunting, uh, the haunting of Hill House. I loved but, it. Yeah. Uh, again, spoiler alert if you have not watched the entire uh, show, but there's a jump scare in episode eight. That I'm like, one, wait, which one? It's a very successful jump scare where it's got that like boo ah kind of feeling, yeah. but it's there for a reason. The characters are being driven in a certain direction for a reason. It takes place in a car. Oh wait, which wait, I'm trying to think of which one that was. When the now. sisters are fighting in the car. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> that was <laughs> Yeah. They have some good jump scares in that one. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm gonna go back to like my the initial one for me is like mouth mouths open like oh. that you know the uh, the mouth open we were just talking about that with the thing mm-hmm. one of my favorite like, moments <sighs> in the thing is is the bennings moment when you realize mm-hmm. that and he just opens his mouth super wide and that's always been even though there's so many crazy yeah. visuals in that movie that's, that's always it. been one of the most chilling moments to me yeah it is i can't like and and did you get the thing like my boyfriend was like is that slender man is that slender man like was that supposed to be slender man like the like uh, the tall guy the giant no. Did I just give away something else? Sorry. No, no, I'm like, in, in, in haunting. haunting. Hill. Oh. He's, he's, he's Hill. He's like William Hill, the, the man of the house. Oh, yeah. But we were wondering if he was like inspired <sighs> by, by visually. Possibly. Because mm-hmm. um, those images of I, him. I think Flanagan. I'm just going to hope that was the case. That way we could have a better interpretation <laughs> of Slender Man this year. Did I, you oh, see the, the Slender Man movie? I haven't. <laughs> Keep it's it. not good. It's I think good. Flanagan, as a designer, has a, a, a penchant for tall, lean, ghoulish figures oh. that comes through in a number of his films. Maybe but no, it is not good. Oh, no. Yeah. It's so sad, too. I mean, we talk about this often here because we're also really big fans of, I, I feel like we should continue to spread the Channel Zero love. Have yes. you ever watched Channel Zero? No. So good. Highly recommended. All four seasons are fantastic. Channel but, Zero. So okay. you know how Slender Man is creepypasta? Right. And all of the seasons of Channel Zero are all based on other creepypastas. And it's just oh. this idea of taking this little nugget of, I- of an idea mm-hmm. that that was uh, born on the internet and maybe grew on the internet through right. collaboration, but then taking it a step further and building an entire season of TV around it. Oh, cool. And it's just, they do it so well in six episodes on sci-fi, and then that Slender Man movie... Oh. I don't know how to describe it. I just don't. There but were the so many Zero creative opportunities. Good. So Must good. watch. All four seasons. Yeah. So good. Huh. Creepy stuff. Who are they stuff. getting to direct these things? Why isn't well. Jonathan Lewis one directing them? <laughs> are you allowed Same. to tell us what he's up to? Is he working on anything? Uh, yeah, he's doing a bunch of different things. He just signed with this Chinese um, company that basically does like a slate of movies. And they've got Robert Zemeckis and Sylvester Stallone. He's one. James Wan is another one, and they are basically like developing five movies each. And he, oh, so wow. he's doing one right now specifically about um, kind of like a modern day hero comic kind of thing, but in South Africa, which is where he's from. So awesome. it's very cool. Have you guys ever considered working together on something? Um. Yeah. Like he's always like, you know, write me a good horror script to come back to or something, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, Paradolia. Take it. It's your <laughs> but because um, he always likes to think that he gave me the idea for that. I'm like, I will give you the Ebola situation of Pareidolia. Um, but um, yeah, he's he's got a lot of that. And then he also has another film, Man at Arms, that's like they're out casting and trying to get people, which is a fall of Camelot kind of thing. Huh. But it's Lancelot's tale. I can't wait until we get a news break on it. Yeah. We can put it on our movie talk show. I'm also not going to be able to stop thinking about a uh, Texas Chainsaw the beginning now. <laughs> like, I, need, I need to go on. Oddly enough, so someone was just taught because. Um, uh, Thanksgiving, the holiday, obviously my whole family is together in the same room and nothing brings us into that room faster than a horror movie. Yeah. And we have that with the beginning. Yeah, We've right. got it hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a really weird movie for it's a weird. family of four to come together and right. enjoy together, but 
That is on the list. Like, that like, does. That's 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 for eyes remake. It's a problem. You guys oh my have God. such so tender funny. moments. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. We do. I mean, I am the one who took my Nana to go see Don't Breathe in the theater. So oh, my gosh. It's fine. Fine. Did she love it? Or was I she don't like, think she loved uh, it. I, I, I really do think that the turkey baster stuff put her put her over the edge. She did not approve of that. But uh, uh, speaking of Sam Raimi, she's got the Evil Dead remake DVD case on her shelf in her house. Hilarious. It's because I have oh a box quote gosh. on it. I'm pretty sure she's <laughs> never watched it. But she's got a sitting there. That's hardcore, <laughs> Nana. Nana couldn't handle some horror movies. <laughs> I see, I wasn't as, I'm not like as into like the Evil Dead as I'm like, drag me to hell. Mm. I really, I don't know why. Maybe is it that I like Drag Me to Hell so much? I love Evil. Alison Lohman. I think I just oh, as an actress, great. I really liked her. Also, Evil Dead doesn't really have a religious tilt to it. That's Do you think true. that's part of what? Maybe attracts it is. You. you know what? Because there's the gypsy lady. Yeah. And, and Drag a, Me to Hell. You know, it's a and proper it's like, demon. Uh huh. And it's the demon. I mean, yeah. that's what scares the. <clears throat> it, the de- obviously, demons just scare the. Whole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so many other possession movies now. What do you Ooh. think of The Conjuring? The Conjuring, I... Oh, I, I have many actually follow-up questions, but answer that one first. <laughs> I, I mean, I definitely liked The Conjuring. It was one of those things I went in initially that I had hoped more for. You know what I mean? Like, for me, if I'm, it's going to be something like The Conjuring where I feel like the house and that had a, a good element to it, I prefer, like, Amityville. You know what I mean? Like, The Conjuring was, like... That had the tree moment, right? Like the tree mm-hmm. where they're like, I, that was the highlight for me. <laughs> I like that contrary. shot. That's a good that shot. Was, that was the highlight for me on the contrary. Have you ever read the book from the Warrens, the demonologists, and their stories? No. It's it's fascinating. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like the push pull between do I believe or do I not believe? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I got to check it out now, though. It's interesting. There's a lot of the, what, curious the stories in it. The demonologist, yeah. It's also whether you believe or not. It's just a good yeah. read. Uh, well, and they were very much believers yeah. and spent their whole life dedicated to this. So, like, that, that I'm sure that would be an interesting read for you. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. love to. That's... I mean, I love, yeah. If there's, like, truth to it, I think that's what gets <laughs> me going. Yeah. What about uh, the film Possession? Um, yeah. No, I like Possession, too. Um, I just felt like some of them... Like, I, I don't know what makes me like certain ones. Like, I wasn't as into, like, possession either. That like, surprised the, me because it's so artsy. No, no, it's not. Like, I prefer, like, The Witch. Do you okay. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, which a lot of my horror friends were like, girl, that was the History Channel. What? Gone bad. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's amazing. Mm. You know, like, I love, but I don't know what makes me love one yeah. Or the other. Or like um, The Last Exorcism. The first, you know, Last Exorcism, that's another one that I really it's a good one. enjoyed. So good. I think I like the flips at the end. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I like to be like, whoa, wait, I didn't see that coming. And and I like it when the characters are new and I don't, I can't, I can get lost in them. Mm-hmm. They're not like name actors. Like I can just be like, this is happening. It's real. Yeah. Ashley Bell is so good in that movie. Right? Yeah. I, like disturbingly good. And I I actually liked the second one on that too. Like when they went to when New Orleans, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I actually liked the, that one too. I mean, it wasn't as scary to me, but Julia Garner was in that. She had that little demon role. <laughs> She's also great she too. She was great. Yeah. So there were elements of that I really liked. But yeah. I want to keep Ooh. talking. I, it's so hard to stop. <laughs> yeah, I could talk about horror just like movies out. all day. Oh. We have to wrap this up. Turn right, our wait. light off. So just to, just to play our, our other game that frequently pops up on this show, it doesn't have to be a movie. What piece of horror genre content have you been exposed to recently that you want everybody out there to go watch, read, listen to, anything at all? Um, oh, my God. That's like, oh, you know what I think everyone should do and experience they're going to have to wait a year for it. But if you're in L.A. on Halloween, you should go to Hancock Park and trick or treat and go to the mansion on, I think, Lumpart, um, on the 400, or no, on the 400 block of Rim Pow, I think it is. Um, the guy that, the movie maker that makes all of the goblins and, and from Star Wars and from Beetlejuice and Pirates of the Caribbean, like, he's the monster man. 
and he's retired now, and he opens his home up, and you get to see up close and personal all the what? monsters, and it's free. How are we just hearing How about this? How did we oh, do something Second like year, that. I've taken my kids. Whoa. They were scared to death. It's like, <laughs> and they do, um, they did Battle LA, they did Texas what? Chainsaw. Wow. Like, you get to see them, uh, the Predator, like, up close and personal, if you want to see all the monster, like, and it's huh. life. Like, it's terrifying. Favorite recommendation yet. That, that is, is a good Now you can one. do that next year. He does yes. it once a year wow. on Halloween. Wow. People oh, line up down the block. Go early. Go at 5.30. Like I need another reason to <laughs> wish that Halloween was now <laughs> yeah. again. Kristen, thank you so much yeah, for coming in. Yeah, so much This was so me. much fun. It Absolutely. went so many interesting fun. directions. Guys, please check out Welcome to Mercy, available on VOD platforms right now. Is there anywhere else people can find you on the internet, social media, website, anything like that? I mean, I if I do anything, I'm kind of on Instagram just under my name, but it's mostly pictures of my family family it's not that exciting <laughs> that's a nice thing again we need more happy wonderful things in our yeah. life yeah. Haley, where can everyone find you on the internet you can find me on twitter at Haley fouch and you can find me on instagram at haystack mcgroovy and man mine's mostly cats so okay. like, live your life if i had my dogs still be that yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure my instagram is like would you say 50 percent cat it's 50 percent it could use more cat in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> i try to keep a balance for people but i guess why am i doing that you could see all the dewy pictures you want at Pinamaroff on Twitter and Instagram. As always, thank you guys for watching and listening to this episode of The Witching Hour. Please don't forget to like and share it. You have officially survived The Witching Hour. Was that a dog? It was. Sounds like a dog. <laughs> <laughs>